Welcome to Biology Gyan. Let's begin with the first chapter of biology of class 10, that is life processes. So actually there are four different processes mentioned in this chapter, but in this video we will be dealing with the nutrition part only. Okay, so let's start. So, what are life processes? Okay, so life processes are nothing but they are simply the various processes taking place in our body to keep us alive. Okay, so next. Now, here you can see the various processes. Okay. That takes place in our body like nutrition, respiration, transportation, excretion, control, growth, etc. But among all this, uh, in this video, we, we will be dealing with only the first four processes, okay? And those are nutrition, respiration, transportation, and excretion. Alright? Okay. So, here you can see. What is nutrition? Yes. So what is nutrition? It is nothing but simply the process of taking in food and also using it. For what? Growth, metabolism and repair. Okay. So it is not only about taking in of food. It is also about growth, metabolism and repair. All right. Okay, so the nutritional stages are insertion, digestion, absorption, transport, assimilation, and excretion. Okay. So next, so here you can see the different types of nutrition. So what are the different ty types of nutrition? One is autotrophic and the other is heterotrophic. Right? So first, let's look into what is autotrophic nutrition. Okay. Yeah. So, here you can see what is autotrophic nutrition. Okay. So, I think uh, you know about this already. But still, as it is mentioned in the chapter, we have to look into it. So, autotrophic nutrition is a process by which organisms make their own food. Like the green plants. Okay. So, how do they make their food now? The question is that. So, they make their food by using the sunlight, carbon dioxide and water. Right, from the soil to produce what? The end products are glucose and oxygen. Now, glucose, they keep it in their body and use it as their food. But this oxygen, they release it back into the environment. Okay? And this entire process is known as photosynthesis. Alright? And uh, now you see, now how do these plants, they absorb the light? How? It is because they have a colored pigment in their leaves called the chlorophyll. Okay, and this helps them in catching or trapping of the sunlight. Okay, all right. Okay, so in this slide, you can see the process of photosynthesis in the first equation, and the same thing in the next image, you can see it in the form of an equation. Okay. So you know this already I guess. So they have made their food using energy from the sun and carbon dioxide from the air, water from the soil. They have made the food and released out the oxygen. Okay. And in the next uh, image you see the same thing. They have used carbon dioxide. You see six molecules of carbon dioxide, six molecules of water and with the help of sunlight. Okay. The process of photosynthesis is carried out and they have produced glucose and oxygen. They will keep the glucose in their body and release out the oxygen. Okay. Okay, so here you can see that photosynthesis takes place in three steps. Yes. So the first step is absorption of light energy by the chlorophyll. And the second is conversion of light energy into chemical energy. Okay. So, I think you already know that energy can be converted from one form to another. 
so in the same way the plants convert the light energy into chemical energy okay and what they do is also split the water molecule now see the water is h2o right now what they will do is they will split this water to produce hydrogen and oxygen okay now why is this hydrogen required so as you know the formula of glucose is c6 h12 and o6 so you can see here that hydrogen is a necessary element okay so from where do the plants get this hydrogen they get this hydrogen from water all right okay so and the last step is what reduction of carbon dioxide to carbohydrate again you see now this thing what is the formula of carbon dioxide co2 and what is the formula of carbohydrate that is glucose it is c6 h12 and o6 now what is a reduction now you know that reduction means what a removal of oxygen right so you can see in this step the carbon dioxide from the carbon dioxide oxygen has been removed and it has been incorporated this carbon has been incorporated now into the carbohydrate okay so that is what is called a reduction of carbon dioxide to carbohydrate okay all right okay so in this image uh, you can see the structure of stomata one is closed and the other is opened okay so how do the stomata closes and opens up right so what happens is that first of all these are called the guard cells okay these are called the guard cells now what happens is that when water enters into these guard cells okay then due to a pressure this guard cell swells up and opens okay so the pore gets opened up when the guard cells swell and here you can see when there is no water when there is no water in the guard cells okay then they don't swell up so the pore also doesn't open up okay so here you can see this thing guard cells swell with water the pore opens like in this case again the guard cells shrink the pore closes like in this case all right okay so now let's look into heterotrophic nutrition okay so okay so what is heterotrophic nutrition so it is a type of nutrition in which organisms depend upon other organisms for their food to survive right so uh, heterotrophic organisms they have to take in all the organic substances everything from other organisms to survive they cannot make anything on their own okay so all kinds of animals fungi non photosynthesizing plants are heterotrophic okay okay so here you can see that heterotrophic nutrition are of three types holozoic saprophytic or saprophytism and parasitic or parasitism so now what happens in holozoic nutrition see the organisms feed by ingesting the solid organic matter which is digested and absorbed into their bodies so the organisms which depends on the solid organic food okay like the human beings okay and other animals and some plants as well now see what type of solid food like meat okay then anything rice okay anything that is solid and the organisms which consume those type of foods are known as holozoic nutrition okay okay the next is saprophytism so what is saprophytism so the organisms which follow this mode of nutrition are also known as saprophytes okay so how do they take the nutrition they take the nutrition from the dead and decaying organic matter all right so this include bacteria fungi okay 
and the next is parasitism now what is parasitism so the organisms which derive their nutrition from the body of other living organisms or from the host okay those type of animals are known as parasites and their mode of nutrition is known as parasitism all right for example lice the most common example okay all right okay so here we will discuss about the types of holozoic nutrition okay i hope you remember from the previous slide that the heterotrophic organisms are of three types one is saprophytic one is parasitic and the other is holozoic so in this slide we are dealing with the holozoic nutrition so now the holozoic means those organisms which take in solid organic food right solid organic food so those type of organisms can be categorized into herbivores carnivores and omnivores so you know herbivores are those organisms which take in plants which feed on plants then carnivores they feed only on meat or on other organisms and omnivores are those organisms which feed both on plants as well as on living organisms like animals okay all right okay so now we are going to begin the most important part of nutrition okay and uh, it is the nutrition in human beings so what do you mean by nutrition in human beings it means all the processes that are associated with the food okay like see insertion digestion absorption assimilation and ejection okay all these processes are related to the food okay and this processes they all constitute together the digestive system all right the organs which are responsible for insertion digestion absorption assimilation and ejection constitute the digestive system and now see this digestive system it comprises of the alimentary canal and the associated digestive glands so what are so what is the meaning of alimentary canal and digestive glands alimentary canal it is a canal okay through uh, which all the different organs are present that will help help in the process of digestion starting from the mouth to the anus and what are the digestive glands the digestive glands are the secretory glands which will secrete the different enzymes that are required for digestion okay so now see the alimentary canal it begins with the mouth then the buccal cavity the pharynx then the esophagus stomach small intestine large intestine rectum and then the anus all right okay okay now see in this slide i have provided for you the diagram of the whole human digestive system okay so see from the last slide you got to know the alimentary canal consists of mouth the esophagus the stomach okay then the small intestine the large intestine and the anus okay and see can you see the liver yeah this is the liver here this one this portion this is a liver and here is the pancreas you can see the pancreas so these glands these are called the glands or digestive glands because they secrete some digestive enzymes that will help in the digestion of the food okay okay so see here the process of nutrition okay now what is insertion insertion means food is taken into the body with the help of mouth means taking in of food is known as insertion then digestion what is digestion digestion means carbohydrates proteins and fats okay are broken down into soluble glucose amino acids fats fatty acids and glycerol now what is meant by this word soluble here soluble means those things will be broken down into a smaller molecule which can be used by our body and that is called soluble now see carbohydrates will be converted into glucose okay 
then the proteins will be converted into amino acids and your fats will be converted into fatty acids and glycerol okay and what is absorption absorption means you see glucose amino acids and this fatty acids and glycerol are absorbed into the body cells so after the digestion is completed those soluble things are absorbed by our body cells okay and the next is assimilation so what is assimilation assimilation means the things which will be absorbed by our body will get transported to all the different cells of our body okay so that is called assimilation means transportation you can say transportation of the digestive food into all the cells of our body and the last is easation so what is easation easation is the removal of the undigested food okay all right okay so in this slide i have again provided the same thing but just in a little bit of more details okay uh, since this is the most important part so you need to know this well that's why i have added it okay so now see insertion starts from the mouth right now see when food is chewed saliva starts digesting carbohydrates so you can see that digestion already starts from the mouth okay the saliva it secretes an enzyme okay and the name of the enzyme is amylase so that will already start digesting the carbohydrates that are present in the food all right so next is the esophagus so what is the esophagus esophagus you can also say it as the food pipe all right so now see how how the food that you chew in your mouth goes down to your stomach it is through a movement called the peristalsis you can see here right peristalsis so what is this peristalsis now see there are muscles in your um, you can say in the food pipe which will force the food from your mouth into the stomach so that movement is known as peristalsis all right and next is the stomach so what happens in the stomach you saw that in the mouth a part of carbohydrate a little part of carbohydrate was already digested okay so what will happen in the stomach is in the stomach mainly the proteins will get digested okay and also what will happen is that a juice okay various type of digestive juices will be secreted into the stomach okay along with that an acid called hydrochloric acid is also secreted okay and what is the function of hydro hydrochloric acid its function is to kill the bacteria or any other microorganisms okay so that you don't get ill otherwise you fall ill if the food is uh, you know contaminated now what will happen is that the protein components in your food are digested mainly in the stomach okay with the help of digestive juices now you see the liver what is the function of the liver now liver is important because it will secrete okay it will secrete a thing called bile okay now this what is the function of this bile the bile its function is to break down the fats now the fats are very you know uh, such molecules which are very large actually and it's very hard to break down fats and so bile which is secreted from the liver it will help in the breakdown of fats okay next see the pancreas now what happens in the pancreas the pancreas doesn't secrete only one enzyme it secretes various enzymes okay i think about three to four enzymes and those will help in the digestion of the food in the stomach as well as in the small intestine you'll see it now now see in the small intestine what happens is that okay from the stomach the food will move into the small intestine okay where this is the stomach from here the food will move into the small intestine and in the small intestine the food will get mixed with bile okay that has come from the liver and also the juices that has come from the pancreas okay so basically what happens in the small intestine is that part of carbohydrates will be digested okay not part actually the whole of carbohydrates which is left to be digested will get digested in the small intestine 
then the proteins whatever is left to be digested in the stomach will get digested here and also the fats will get digested all right so the complete process of digestion takes place in the small intestine all right then next is the large intestine now see what's hap what happens in the large intestine so the food which did not get digested or which were unable to get digested okay which are not able to get digested okay so those food will be sent to the large intestine all right so and what will happen is that in this large intestine the water okay the water will be absorbed okay the water will be absorbed back into the body okay it will be absorbed back into the body whatever is left and from there the undigested food will pass out from the body through the anus all right okay so this is the last slide okay and here i have provided all the digestive enzymes you can see so first let's start with the mouth see in the mouth which is the enzyme that is secreted it is the salivary amylase all right and what does it do it breaks down starch into maltose or you can say starch into sugar okay the starch is what the starch is a complex you know it's a complex sugar so from a complex it will break down to simple sugar all right okay then in the stomach in the stomach what is secreted pepsin so pepsin is a enzyme that digests your protein so see the function of pepsin it breaks down proteins into dipeptides so proteins are complex molecules so dipeptides are a little bit less complex all right okay and then see next is the pancreas so i told you in the pancreas three to four enzymes actually three enzymes are uh, you know secreted what are those amylase then trypsin and the lipase all right so what is the function of amylase you can see from the mouth also there was amylase and here also there is amylase so the function of amylase is to break down starch right it is a its function is to break down starch okay trypsin what does it do it breaks down proteins into dipeptides same like that in the stomach okay and lipase what does it do lipase it breaks down the lipids what are lipids lipids means fats lipids are also known as fats okay so here you can see in the uh, the the pancreas it secretes all the enzymes that are required for the breakdown of carbohydrates proteins as well as fats all right now see what happens in the small intestine okay so the in in the small intestine okay some other digestive juices are also secreted by the wall of the small intestine okay the wall of the small intestine it secretes some other digestive juices as well okay and what are those one is maltose one is sucrase one is lactase and one is peptidase and what are the functions of this the maltose it will break down the maltose into glucose see in the mouth the starch the starch was converted into into maltose and this maltose will now be completely broken down into its smallest unit which is the glucose which can be used by the body then again sucrase you see sucrase it also breaks down sucrose into glucose so glucose is the smallest unit okay smallest unit of sugar which can be used by the body directly next is the lactase again see lactase what does it do it breaks down lactose into glucose okay and peptidase it breaks down dipeptides into amino acids so what were dipeptides dipeptides were the smaller units of proteins so proteins are the large units from there it was broken down into di dipeptides all right and now from dipeptides the dipeptides are broken down into amino acids okay so the amino acids 
So the amino acids are the smallest unit of proteins which can be absorbed by the body. All right, and also there is you know the bile which converts fats into fatty acids. It is not provided here, but there is. Okay, wait, just wait a second. So there is another enzyme that is the bile. Okay, and the bile it will convert the fats. Okay, into your fatty. acids all right so we have reached the end of our presentation okay i hope you like the video and if you liked it then please hit the like button share and if you have any doubts then let me know in the comment section and don't forget to subscribe because i'll be uploading the next parts in my next videos thank you